Hey guys, so the next thing that we're going to be looking at in numerical methods is something called the newton raphson process or the newton raphson method. Um, and this one's pretty straightforward. I think you're actually going to quite like this one. It's, it's quite a nice method, quite easy to do as well. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find the root of this particular function that we've got here, which is y equals f of x. And I've written down here is that a seemingly sensible thing to do is to try and follow the direction of the line to get to the root. So if we started off with x0 as my input value, if I go up to the function, what would be a good idea to try and get to the root would be to go to the function and then to kind of come down along a tangent to that curve and to get to x1. Then after you've got to x1, you might go back up to the function again and say, OK, well, I want to get to the root. Good idea of getting to the root is to follow along that tangent with the idea that the tangent would kind of send you closer to the root. So a seemingly sensible thing to do is to follow the direction of the line, i.e. use the gradient of the tangent. If the line was reasonably straight, the point of the tangent hits the x the point that the tangent hits the x-axis would be close to the root. So we're kind of coming up to the curve, we're hoping that the tangent will send us closer to the root. Up to the curve, will the tangent send us closer to the root? And then we can apply that process a few times to see if we end up at the at the root. So I'm just going to show you a quick animation of what this looks like here. Let's just wait for this to go back to the start again. So it says this is the input value x1, you get the function, and then the tangent sends you down to x2. You go up to the function, the tangent sends you along to x3. You go and find the tangent, it sends you along to x4. You go to x4 and it sends you along to the tangent, and you get to x5. And you can see there that x5 was incredibly close to the root. Remember when we're talking about the root, we're actually just saying where does it cross the x-axis. So I'm just going to leave that animated for a short while again, just so you can see what happens there. Um, each time the tangent is being created, it's hopefully aiming closer towards it. And you can see how x1 is far away, x2 gets closer, x3 gets a bit closer but on the other side, and then x4 and x5 are really, really very close. Okay, so we are going to try and derive the formula. This is the formula that we've got down here, and this is what you literally get given in the formula book as well. So you don't need to know this, but I think it's useful. So what we're trying to do is to find out what this equation of this straight line is that we've got here. Okay, xn is one of our coordinates for this tangent, and the y coordinate would therefore be f of xn. And we're going to try and find the gradient at this particular point here to be able to come up with um, what the equation of this straight line is. Now this is why y equals mx plus c is not a very good formula. So instead we're going to use y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. So we're going to keep y and we're going to subtract, this is to try and find the equation of the, the red line that we've got here. We're going to subtract the y coordinate, which is this one here, which is just the function when you put xn into it. Now, the gradient at this point is the derivative of the function, and the value that you would put in to find the gradient at that point is xn, so it's just f dash xn. And that's all being multiplied by x minus, and the x coordinate at this point is xn. Now, we're actually trying to find out what xn1 is equal to, xn plus 1 is, because this is hopefully going to get us closer to what the root is. So, um, we know that when y equals 0, x equals xn plus 1. So, I'm now going to substitute that y is 0 and that x is xn plus 1 and see if we can come up with this formula. So, we end up with minus f of xn equals f dash xn. Whoops, no equals there. Let's just undo that for a second. Oh, it's undone the whole thing. That's really annoying. So we get minus f of xn equals f dash xn. And x is xn plus 1 because that's the coordinate that we have down here when y was equal to 0, minus xn. So I'm going to start off by dividing these so that I can just have this by itself. So I get minus f of xn divided by f dash xn equals xn plus 1 minus xn. So adding the xn to the other side, let's start off, I've got my, I've just switched it around as well, xn plus 1 equals xn minus f of xn over 
f dash of x n. f dash of x n meaning the derivative of the function with the x, um, these three coordinates all being the same that we've got here. So this is saying to find out what x n plus 1 is, all you need to do is, uh, what do you need to do? To find out what xn plus 1 is, you take the coordinate that you have as your starting point and you subtract from it the function value of that coordinate divided by the derivative, um, the, sorry, the gradient function at that particular point as well. So we started off with the equation of the red line. Let's just say that this is the red line. And then we tried to find out what this coordinate here was by saying when y was equal to 0, x was equal to xn plus 1, because this was the thing that we we're actually trying to find out. Hopefully, xn plus 1, hope, is a, a good approximation. However, you can keep replying, applying this process just like we did with iteration. So when you get what x1 is, if you have this was x0 and you get x1, you can then do x2, x3, x4, and you can get closer and closer to the root that you've got there. Okay, so let's go back to the original example. And when I say the original example, I mean right at the beginning we said some of these equations are going to be difficult to solve. So this was the equation that we've got. We're trying to find out what this one is that we've got here. First of all, make sure that your calculator is in um, in radians mode because we're doing stuff with differentiation here. So we're going to try and find out um, x equals cos x. We're going to return to our original example, which was trying to solve this equation that we've got here. And I think we rearranged it so that it was x minus cos x. So our function is x minus cos x. And in order to come up with the newton raphson formula, I'm just going to write a reminder of what that was. It was xn plus 1 equals xn minus fxn divided by f dash xn. So I've got what f of x is. I better work out what f dash x is as well, which is just going to be 1. And cos differentiates to minus sign. So minus cos is going to differentiate to sine x. And they've told us that x0 is 0 0.5. So if x0 is 0 0.5, I'm going to try and find out what the, the root is, which I'm hoping is going to be somewhere over here. <coughs> okay. So x1 would be equal to the previous one, which is 0 0.5, minus the function with 0 0.5, which is going to be 0 0.5 minus cos of 0 0.5, divided by 1 plus the sine of 0 0.5. Now, because this is going to be an iterative method, you are better to try and set up your calculator in this kind of way. So you're going to store 0 0.5 as your answer in the calculator by pressing 0 0.5 and then equals. And then you're just going to be doing the answer minus, and then you're going to do the answer minus cos of the answer, divided by 1 plus sine of the answer. So this bit here, the formula is saying you've got xn minus f of xn divided by f dash xn. It's this variation using these things that we've got here. So when I press equals, my x1 is going to be 0 0.9956. I can then just press equals again, and it will substitute that in for me. And you get 0 0.9998. And if I press it again, I get that x3 is equal to 0 0.9999. Eight again so it looks like it's not really going to be changing from that kind of value that we've got at all there and um, we can just double check that that makes sense oh hang on a second I'm in degrees mode even though I just told you we should be in radians mode so I'm going to need to cancel all of this and do this bit again sorry guys I was thinking they don't look like they match the graph very well I knew something was up so I'm just going to put this bit I've done on my calculator here again so it's going to be 0 0.5 equals and then I'm going to do answer minus um, answer minus cos answer divided by 1 plus sine answer. And so we get that x1 is equal to 0 0.7552, x2 is 0 0.7391, that looks much better for the graph, doesn't it? And x3 is 0 0.7391 as well. So you can see how quickly it seems to have gotten to the root, which is 0 0.7391. I'm just going to check that by saying, okay, well, if x is equal to 0 0.7391, I'm actually going to work out what cos of x is and see if I get the same thing. So I'm literally just going to do the cos of that answer 
and you do get exactly the same thing, which is 0 0.7391, because remember, that was the original equation we were trying to solve. What value of x is the same as the cosine of that particular value of x? Okay, let's actually do some quick questions then. So using the newton raphson process, state the recurrence relation for the following functions. So we know that x of n plus 1 is going to be equal to x of n minus this function of n, which is going to be xn cubed minus 2, over the derivative of that function, which is 3xn squared. Okay, this one here, the iterative formula would be x of n minus tan of x of n, and tan differentiates to sec squared x of n. And then you could just use the iterative formula there. And for this one down here, x of n plus 1 will be equal to x of n minus x of n squared minus x n minus 1, all over the derivative of this, which is just 2x of n minus 1. Obviously, that bit disappears. You can just put these in your calculator, and you'll be solving the newton raphson process really, really, really quickly. Okay, so we're going to have a quick look at an exam question here. I've got a reminder of what the formula book tells you. Um, so we've got this particular function, and it says the equation f of x equals 0 has a root beta in interval minus 2, minus 1. Taking minus 1.5 as the first approximation to beta, apply the newton raphson process once. They only want you to do it once to find a second approximation to beta, giving your answer to two decimal places. So I like to start off by writing what the function is and then what the derivative of the function is. So that's a half x to the 4 minus x cubed plus x minus 3. And then the derivative of the function is this, so that's going to be a half times 4, so that's 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1. So they've asked us to take x naught as minus 1.5. So this means that my x1 will be minus 1.5 minus, and then I'm going to substitute minus 1.5 in here to always show your, uh, your substitution. So that's a half... And I only need to say a substitution for the first one. A half times 1.5 to the 4, minus 1.5 cubed. Oops, these should all have minus 1.5s in. My mistake. And then you've got plus minus 1.5, minus 3, all divided by the derivative, but with the minus 1.5 subbed in. So that's going to be 2 times minus 1.5 cubed, minus 3 times minus 1.5 squared, plus 1. Pretty boring, hey? So let's just, I'm going to save myself some time. I'm going to type minus 1.5 and then press equals so I have it stored as my answer. So it's just going to be answer minus, and then I'm going to put it as my fraction. So that's a half times the answer to the power of 4, minus the answer cubed, plus answer minus 3, divided by 2 answer cubed, minus 3 answer squared plus 1. And so it looks like my first approximation is minus 1.3875, but they wanted it to two decimal places, so that's minus 1.39. Now I'm going to just keep going because I've already got it stored in my calculator. I'm going to just keep pressing equals to see what I get for my other values. So I then get minus 1.37. Four zero, and that's to four decimal places, and then x3 is minus 1.3738, and then x, whoa, I don't like when it does that, so then we get that x4 is equal to minus 1.3738 as well, doesn't look like it's going to change after that, so you can see compared to the um, the iteration method that we were doing in the last lesson, this is actually really efficient, this is a pretty quick way of getting there. Um, and it kind of makes sense with the way that the, the tangent is going as quick as possible to that to that route. <coughs> okay, let's have a look now at you having a go at this question. So pause the question here, see if you can do this one. You just need to find a second approximation, giving your answer to three decimal places. <coughs> and I'll do this in just a second. So pause here and I'll have a go. Okay, so x naught is going to be 
f of x is 3x squared minus 11. I'm going to write it in index form, 11x to the minus 2. So f dash x is 6x plus 22x to the minus 3. So x1 is going to be equal to 1.4 minus, f of x goes on the top, so that's 3 times 1.4 squared minus 11, 1.4 to the minus 2, all divided by 6 times 1.4 plus 22 times 1.4 to the minus 3. So I'm just going to do the first one, I'm not going to set up the whole thing, but I still find it easier to have 1.4 stored in my calculator. So I'm just going to do answer minus... 3 answer squared minus 11 answer to the minus 2 and then on the denominator I've got 6 answer plus 22 answer to the minus 3 and so you should come up with 1.384 and that's because they wanted it to three decimal places I have actually set up the on my calculator if you keep pressing equals you should see it's just not going to change very much at all it gets to the root really 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 quickly okay so you can now have a go at doing some stuff from exercise 10c i'm going to pause the video here just to think about when numerical methods uh when newton raphson process sorry doesn't work okay oh and there was the answer we did get that one right so you get 1.384 which is what we had here okay